Hello and welcome to Mike and Nick's Gentlemanly Chats. Now, I'm sounding a little bit more subdued than I normally would be, and that's because it is part, I don't fucking know, of the week that Nick went away, um, or as we're calling it, Abandoned Fest. Uh, Nick is still on holiday, and I am determined to try and do as many podcasts as I can. Um, so far, the count is at three, and we are four days in, so that's that's not bad. We've had a nondescript episode one, uh, which is me and a couple of friends. Um, I've just been involved with an into uh, uh, we're calling it GP Question Time, and we just interviewed Adam, the cosplay boyfriend, uh, the grumpy cosplay boyfriend, um, who was a delight. He's a, he's a top bloke and has some really um, really progressive... I say progressive, there are all things that you probably should be doing at cons and ways that you should be, ha- be behaving, but as we found out, that's not really the case. So, uh, and then I was also... We also did a mic and nicks with a special guest, Dave. Uh, Dave's actually coming back tomorrow, so we'll probably get another podcast. And we'll be starting the new, uh, the new thing, um, Beard, uh, Super Beard Fight Hyper Edition... Um, tomorrow as well so that'll be kind of cool but um, today I thought I'd try something a little bit different um, I'm not going to try um, and ask me anything because that that didn't go as well as I had originally planned but what I'd like to do um, is perform um, part of a comic book for you um, Batman is one of my massive loves if you've not realised that already uh, by going on the on the Geek Pride podcast or going on basically anything I'm involved with, really. Um, and I have been told I do quite a good Joker, so what I'm going to try and do is just read the first section of The Killing Joke, and uh, you'll be able to read along as uh, as well. I'm gone, I've got the, the Killing Joke Deluxe Edition, which is the one... Oh, I think they all have the, uh, the Joker with that, that camera... On the front of it, I've got a got a glass of drink. Uh, so hopefully my voice isn't going to give out, because as luck would have it, uh, for you, not for me, um, my throat has decided today on the day that I was going to be doing the most talking. I had a lot of customers to phone today in uh, my boring day job. Um, <laughs> my voice has started to get a bit crackly, um, and it's a little bit annoying because my birthday is coming up, and I I kind of want to be able to sing and shout and, and enjoy enjoy my life. So, without further ado, I'm going to be reading um, The Killing Joke. I will make some sort of noise. I, I wanted to have some sort of like, every time you want, needed to turn the page, but I've left it far too late to be able to do that. So I'm going to be reading along with you. You don't necessarily have to have the comic book because I'm going to be describing what's going on, but we're, uh, we're going to start at page one. And uh, and get to there's a crucial there's a crucial moment um, something that happens to Barbara Gordon um, fucking spoilers she gets shot um, and I think we're going to stop about there and then maybe do a part two uh, later on dependent on the uh, dependent on the reception we get from this but cool so we'll start with page one it's raining heavily outside. Uh, to the point where there are little ringlets in in the in the pools. A stern breeze is blowing up as it's pushing the leaves around. And in the middle distance, we see a car pulling up and those distinctive headlights of the Batmobile. Where are we? Where are we? You ask. We're going to Arkham Asylum. A long figure that we can see as the Batman starts walking through the through the gates and into a kind of doth, gothic building. He walks past Commissioner Gordon, who's drinking a coffee, who hands his coffee to his inferior officer. They both enter Arkham Asylum, and the nurse, um, the main receptionist, has a rather poignant um, little sign on her desk that says, you don't have to be crazy to work here, but it helps. We see Batman walking past a few of his rogues gallery Harvey Dent, in particular, is looking at him and snarling, who you know, obviously, as Two-Face. Then Batman gets to a cell that says, Name unknown, 0801. The guard lets him in. 
and Batman enters and the door closes behind him. Now we see someone playing solitaire. There were these two lunatic guys. There were these two guys. First fucking line of dialogue and I fucked it up. Let's try that again. There were these two guys in a lunatic asylum. Batman speaks. Hello. I came to talk. Flap. The Joker is quietly playing solitaire. On his jacket, he has the number 0801. I've been thinking lately about you and me, about what's going to happen to us in the end. We're going to kill each other, aren't we? Jim Gordon looks on, worried, while the Joker continues to play solitaire. Perhaps you'll kill me, perhaps I'll kill you. Perhaps sooner, perhaps later. I just wanted to know that I've made a genuine attempt to talk things over and avert that outcome just once. The Joker continues to play solitaire. Batman slams his fist onto the table and grabs the Joker's hands. Are you listening to me? It's life and death that I'm discussing here. Maybe my death, maybe yours. I don't fully understand why ours should be such a fatal relationship, but I don't want your murder on my... Batman looks at his hands and finds some of the makeup that the Joker had on his arms, literally on his hands. Hey! Hey, wait a minute! You don't get to touch me! I got rights! You're not allowed to touch me! Batman has smeared the makeup on the Joker's face. Where is he? Uh, oh, God, no! Do you realize. Do you realize what you said, free in here? Where, where is he? Get him, get him off me! Jim Gordon bursts into the room. Okay, that's enough. You know laws regarding mistreatment of inmates as well as I do. If you harm one hair on his head. Commissioner, if you're concerned about it, it's yours. Take care of it. Now, you whimpering little smear of slime, I'm going to ask you politely just one more time. Where is he? The scene flashes forward to a beat, beat up amusement park. Flashes back, sorry. And we have some guy in a, in a hat. And uh, he looks like he's the guy who owns it. And uh, I'm going to take a drink. Ah. ah, there you are. You had a chance to inspect the property and decide if it's what you're looking for? Well, it's garish, ugly, and derelicts have used it for a toilet. The rides are dilapidated to the point of being lethal and could easily maim or kill innocent little children. Oh, so you don't like it? Don't like it? I'm crazy for it. <laughs> you... You really want to buy it, and the price I mentioned isn't too steep. Too steep, my dear sir, as I'm looking at it, I'm making a killing. And anyway, money really isn't a problem. Not these days. Flashback to a kind of noirish time. And um, there's a girl and a guy, and they're talking. And uh, the woman is, is clearly pregnant. Well, how'd it go? Did they like your act? Well, uh, they said they might call me. I, I don't know. I, I got nervous and messed up the punchline. Oh, wh what do you mean, all? I, I didn't. I didn't mean anything. Y yes, you did. Y you, you said. You said, oh, like, oh, like that. Jesus, all I said was, you said, oh, as in, oh, you didn't get a job, as in, oh, how are we gonna feed the baby? You think I'm not worried about that? You think I, I don't care that it's all a big joke to me or something? Jeez, I have to go. I, I gotta go and I, I stand up there and nobody laughs. And you think, and you think I, oh, oh God, I'm, oh God, I'm sorry. Oh, baby. I don't, I don't mean to take it out on you. You're s suffering enough being married to a loser. Honey, that's not... It's true. I can't support you. Oh, Janine, wh what are we going to do? At this point, the man is sobbing in his pregnant wife's arms. It'll be okay. Junior won't be here for another three months, and I think Mrs. Burkis will let the rent go a little longer. She feels sorry for me. She hates me. 
Miss Berkis has stood outside the apartment and she can hear what's going on. She's holding a cat like a crazy, crazy cat lady. The gentleman has got up and is walking towards the window. It's raining outside. She comes out into the hallway to scowl at me every time I go upstairs. Her house stinks of cat litter and old people. I, I gotta get you out of here before the baby comes. I just want enough money to set up in a decent neighborhood. There are girls on the street who earn that in a weekend without having to tell a single joke. <laughs> Honey, don't worry about it, any of it. I still love you, you know. Job or no job. You're good in the sack. And you know how to make me laugh. Flash forward to the Joker looking at a picture of a laughing clown. His reflection caught in the glass. He's not happy. He looks terrifying. Back to the guy who's now sat on an elephant. You know, I'm, I'm positive you won't regret this purchase. The place isn't, ain't that dilapidated. Uh, there are some of these rides are still pretty sturdy. Uh, really, this could be one hell of a carnival. Oh, you're so right. Thanks for your smooth sportsmanship and your silver tongue. You've completely sold me on the place. Let's shake on it. Oh, well, sure, it's, it's my privilege. Indeed it is. Naturally, I won't be paying you anything. My colleagues persuaded your partner to sign the necessary documents just over an hour ago. The property's mine already. <laughs> You're happy that, that I take it. There's a silence. I can see you are. I'm so glad. You know, when you see the improvements I have planned for this place, I guarantee you'll be absolutely speechless. And incidentally... That's a lifetime guarantee. Well, I must dash. There's equipment to hire, plus workers who'll suit the general tone of the establishment. And then, of course, I've got to secure my main attraction. Do feel free to stick around. The Joker walks away, and we finally see a close-up on the face of the guy who sold him. And he's got the Joker Richter Mortis face. He's been poisoned by a buzzer that was in the Joker's hand when they shook. Back to the Batcave. Batman's holding the Joker card. He throws it down after looking at a picture of the Bat family. We see a long shot of the Batcave and some of the exploits from his previous adventures. We've got the Tyrannosaurus, the, uh, bat, the bat Whirly gig, the Big Liberty Penny, um, some Bat Rangs through the ages, uh, the Mad Hatter's hat, Jason Todd's Joker. Um, Jason Todd's Robin costume is just in the corner. Batman types in Joker into the Bat computer and every screen is coming up with unknown. No one knows who this man is. Suddenly Alfred comes into the cave with a plate full of sandwiches and some hot tea. Your refreshment, sir, Master Bruce. Is there anything further I can assist you with or will that be all? No, that's all. I've been trying to figure out what he intends to do. It's almost impossible. I don't know him, Alfred. All these years, and I don't know who he is any more than he knows who I am. How can two people hate each other without knowing each other? And uh, then we fast, and then we skip forward to the house of the Gordon family. And Jim Gordon is cutting up a newspaper clipping of the Batman and Barbara walks in I hate I hate this whenever we go to jail I think please God keep him there then he escapes and all we and we all sit around hoping that he won't do anything too awful this time dad just once could you leave your work uh, out of the office and relax I made you a cocoa thank you sweetheart I'll drink it when I've pasted this latest clipping in you know, I found that Catwoman scrapbook you said was missing. It was behind the wardrobe. The day you ought to let me some... <sighs> Someday, <laughs> you ought to let me work out some proper filing system like we used at the library. Mm. Uh, look, you used too much spe paste. It's all squidging under the edges of the carpet, and you're going to get it on your pants. Barbara, you're fussier than your mother. What? Was that the door? Yeah, it'll be clean from across the street. Tonight's our yoga class. Come on, Dad. Company, put your scrapbooks away. <laughs> Look at this one. First time we met. Now, what year was that? 
What's really interesting about this picture is it's the first appearance of the Batman from Detective Comics 27. It's actually the front cover, so it's interesting. Uh, anyway, so Barbara turns around with all the joy of a daughter looking at her dad, a woman totally in love with the man that um, raised her. Well, I remember you describing the white face and the green hair when I was a kid. It scared the hell out of me. I thought you'd be interested. Well, yeah, I had some interesting nightmares. Barbara opens the door to the Joker, dressed in holiday attire. And she sees the gun in his hand, and suddenly the Joker fires and hits Barbara in the spine. She falls, dropping her coffee, and smashes across the coffee table. Bob? Please don't worry, it's a psychological complaint! Common amongst most ex-librarians, you see, she thinks she's a coffee table edition. <laughs> Mind you, I can't say much for the volume's condition. I mean, there's a hole in the jacket and the spine appears to be damaged. You scum, my daughter, I'll hurt! One of the Joker's minions has punched Commissioner Gordon in the stomach, and they're now beating him up. Frankly, she won't be walking off the shelves in that state of repair. In fact, the idea of her walking anywhere seems increasingly remote. But then, that's always a problem with softbacks. God, these literary discussions are so dry. When you finish with the old boy, you know where to take him. And please, do be careful. After all, he is topping the bill. You know, it's such a shame you'll miss your father's debut, Miss Gordon. Sadly, our venue wasn't built with the disabled in mind. But don't worry, I'll take some snapshots to remind him of you. Barbara is lying on the ground, and the Joker has started to undo her top. What? Why are you doing this? To prove a point. He lifts a glass and smiles that terrifying smile. Here's to crime. And that's where we're going to leave it today. Um, I just wanted to kind of give a little bit of a taste. Um, maybe we'll go through the rest. Let's see how this panned out. And if you like what you heard, then drop us a line on uh, www.geek-pride.co.uk or um, give me a shout on Twitter at, at the underscore dark underscore Mike or hit us up on Facebook at Geek Pride One or Twitter at Geek Pride One, in fact. Um, thank you very much. Uh, keep it geek and see you probably tomorrow when I do more stuff with, with Dave. Woohoo!